In this video, uh, we're going to learn the reflection principle of the standard Brownian motion. Uh, first, let's define our Brownian motion. Uh, of course, we have our uh, W of t, where t is greater than zero, which is um, the uh, standard Brownian motion. And meanwhile, we define another stochastic processes. So we define M of T is defined by the uh, maximum of this Brownian motion. Oops. The maximum of this Brownian motion has reached up to uh, time T. This is essentially the maximum and this T what I want to emphasize is this T is uh, changing and now uh, we're curious uh, we're curious of the following quantity uh, we're curious of what is the distribution of this uh, M of t. So let's suppose we're curious of uh, what is the probability of this M of t is greater than a, let's say uh, for some uh, a that's uh, positive. And to solve this problem, and we have to uh, look back and instead of we computing this probability directly, let's compute uh, um, this probability first. That is, uh, W of t is uh, greater than or equal to a. But of, of course, you might say, okay, um, this is nothing but because we know uh, W of t, once we fix t, is a normal random variable with mean zero and uh, variance t, but uh, our goal is to establish the relation of this random variable with m. So now um, we use our splitting. We split the probability of wt is greater than a uh, by the following. That is, uh, wt is greater than a and uh, m of t is greater than a plus um, w of t is greater than or equal to a, but uh, m of t is less than a. All right, and apparently uh, these two uh, events are mutually exclusive, so this splitting is okay. But now let's look at uh, uh, this event right here. Okay, then something interesting will happen is because um, this one says the maximum of this Brownian motion up to time t is less than a. But meanwhile, uh, it says the Brownian motion is greater than or equal to a at time t, which means these two are contradicting each other, which means they are mutually exclusive, so this is impossible. Uh, because uh, this says the Brownian motion has not reached A. This is like, uh, let me sketch a figure. If uh, this is A, M of T is less than A, uh, says, so this is like the Brownian motion, and this is up to time T, okay? Um, this is uh, m of t is less than a means uh, this uh, Brownian motion has uh, not reached a before t. Okay, and which means uh, this event is impossible. Therefore, uh, it equals zero. This probability. And now let's look at the first one. 
now let's continue. Let's look at the first one. The first one, what we want to do is we want to rewrite um, this type of uh, A intersecting with B event. Uh, rewrite it by conditional probability. That is, uh, essentially, we've given A condition B times uh, the probability of B. Okay. If we do this uh, trick, you'll see that this is nothing but um, W of T is greater than or equal to A given M of T is uh, greater than or equal to A times M of T is uh, greater than or equal to A. And to, um, to, invest to investigate how do we compute uh, this probability right here. So this is the title of this lecture, which is uh, the reflection principle. And now uh, let's take a closer look of uh, what does uh, this event mean, which is m of t is greater than a. First of all, it means the maximum of this Brownian motion up to t is greater than a. And in other words, this means uh, this Brownian motion, the standard Brownian motion WT, has reached A sometime before T. Okay. And I want to emphasize this time is random, some random time, let's say uh, before or at T. But, uh, but the, the point is, uh, it's random. Okay, and now what happens is, uh, now let's uh, sketch a figure. So this is our time, and uh, this is our W of T. And keep this in mind, our uh, brown motion always starts at zero. So at zero, we're here. And say, let's say we go up, and uh, this is A right here. And this is time T, okay? So what happens is at time A, at time A right here. So the Brownian motion has reached this A at some time, let's say this time T A, okay? And what happens is, then after this time, um, think about from this time, we restart the process, the Brownian motion, because starting at this time, um, it's equally probable that this Brownian motion goes up or goes down because uh, uh, we have this independent and uh, um, stationary increment and the normal distribution. The normal distribution uh, condition at uh, this point right here is a normal distribution. So at any future time, condition here is a normal distribution uh, with mean at A, which means uh, we can either go up or down from A, okay? And now what happens is we reflect this path with respect to um, this A, okay? So for example, if this Brownian motion, let's say end here um, at X, then this point is as if this is a plus a minus x. Okay, so for each path that ended up below this a, there exists a reflected path ended up at a plus uh, a minus x, and which tells us something about um, 
this probability right here is because so now this uh, probability becomes instead of uh, we directly computed we think about uh, this probability Because um, after, like uh, our reflection principle says, after we have reached this A, it's equally likely this Brownian motion goes up or down. And by reflection principle, uh, these two, first of all, they add up to 1. And uh, uh, by reflection principle, uh, these two are equal as well. All right, and uh, um, so as a result, uh, we have this is one half. Okay, and now if we plug in back uh, of this one half right here in this equation. And keep this in mind, this equation is equal to a probability of w of t is greater than or equal to a. As a result, we have a probability of w of t is greater than or equal to a is one half of the probability of the m of t is uh, greater than or equal to a. All right, and now. Um, Let's take a retrospective view of the formula we have just derived. We have used actually several properties of uh, um, Brownian motion in deriving uh, this formula. One key property is we assume, like uh, in, in this lecture, that the path after this t of a is not affected by whatever happens before this t sub a. Okay. So um, what actually we have assumed is uh, we have used the following, which is uh, after uh, t of a, which means we define a new Brownian motion, that's maybe let's say s plus t sub a, subtract w t of a is independent of whatever happens Uh, before t of a, and this is this is kind of problematic because uh, t of a is a random time. It's the first time this Brownian motion hits a. Okay, and this property we have used uh, is actually called uh, strong uh, Markov. Uh, property. Okay. So in next video we're going to explain this property, but uh, uh, because the proof of this property is way uh, beyond the scope of this class, but uh, um, we will see uh, how this strong market property plays out, plays a role in this uh, uh, derivation in, in next video.